Tis the season to shine with H&M. Discover the holiday collection and find fashionable pieces for your wardrobe or for under the tree. Get inspired and dazzle with this year's glam. From tuxedo styles, bow detailed pieces, impressive prints, and more. From unforgettable looks to unforgettable gifts. With fashion finds to home decor, find it all at H&M. Treat your loved ones and yourself this season. Shop in-store or at HM.com. The holidays are a time to feel and create joy. And what could be more joyous than the look on her face as she unwraps a stunning new jewelry piece from Blue Nile? How about getting 50% off your purchase? Blue Nile offers premium quality, priced below traditional retail. Their online experts are available 24-7 to answer any questions and make sure you've picked the perfect gift. For a limited time, you can get 50% off at BlueNile.com. That's 50% off at BlueNile.com. again with another episode of the Shades of Blue Soccer Show. My name is Cody Bradley. I've got my Blue Testament compadres here with me today. That makes me feel special, Thad. I don't know about you. Compadre. I don't yeah, think I've used yeah. that word yet. Wow. You're a compadre cool. now. Yeah. It felt good. It felt right. And it's a little nostalgic today. It's our last time in this studio. Not Good mad riddance. about it. Yeah. Oh, oh sorry. No, definitely not mad about it. We got the we got the door propped open because it's always so damn hot in here. Will the new place have air conditioning? <laughs> I imagine the building has air conditioning. Does it's the new nice. place have a close liquor store? No, it's in Corporate Woods. That's the thing oh, I'm worried about. Damn. Yeah, I'm a mission right now. He's there worried is every about that. kind of food I could ever imagine. <laughs> Chipotle is right there. Chick Fil A is right there. Everything is like right here. And now I'm gonna have to drive forever to go find. That's a stuff. good point. Dang it. It's not that far. <sighs> anyway. Anyway. <laughs> Sporting Kansas City one and L. Awesome, perfect win. Just as Bob said, you were like, the best thing can happen is a Polito goal. Yeah, and gosh, that win was just a breath of fresh air, huh? It was. Like, and we may be onto something. And not just because it was real soccer, but just because they actually won. And did all the things they didn't do last year. <laughs> Just Closed about, the game yes. out. Mostly defended. Put away half chances. <laughs> Marginally defended better, I guess. <laughs> Depends on who we're looking at. All the new guys contributed. Yes, that was that's the key All there. the new guys that played contributed. Exactly, let's right? Let's talk Got about... the score sheet. Let's talk about the, the defense first. Put a bright spot on the defense, at least how I saw it. How did you see it? So everyone like Everyone, you know, Gotti Kinda... What a newcomer. What a phenomenal what a goal. goal. You know, that was all great. But I seriously came out of that game. I think Luis Martins is the one I'm most excited about. Defensively. Yeah, just... It's Tell just, us more. Well, maybe not defensively, oh, okay. but... He's, a guy he's, on the defense. <laughs> he is filling in at a spot where, you know, Seth was serviceable for all of those years and showed up at the right times a lot. But, man, I, I, I think having this weapon there is going to add another dynamic. So he's kind of like Zeus he was a couple years ago. <laughs> yeah. Yes, a couple years ago. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I know, it feels so hey. weird. It feels so weird talking bad about Zeus. Yeah, I'm not trying to talk bad about him. It's just we, realities. We keeps it real <laughs> on these shades of blues. Jeez. I love you, Zeus. But there's a step that's been slowed. Okay, so so Cody, I'm interested. How do you think he played defensively? His one on one defending in your mind was there were there were I mean adequate. How about adequate? Can okay, I just say that. Okay, yeah. Again, more of my focus is on when I say that is on him going sure. forward. Sure. But and really, really forward. He was all the way on the other end. All the way up there. But yeah, there were times. You know, he made he made good plays in the back. He did tracking back well. He does the he runs a lot. He'll do the work that it. That obviously he is, or he wouldn't be on Vermees's field, but he's going to do the work that is required to be out there, and yeah, I love it. Did he track back 80 yards and make a game-saving tackle? Oh, sorry. 
No, that was Zeusy. Okay, all right. Zeusy's one shining moment in that game, definitely. There was yeah. another another good play that immediately comes to mind. That yeah. was a defensive play. Let's not rag on Zeusy that much because he's not that bad. I mean, people like are heavily criticizing him. He's not that All bad, the but the goal, the goal was bad. Undressed that on comes Martins. to mind, maybe. <laughs> that was the other side of the field. Yeah, who was the uh, who was guarding the runner there? I don't remember it that closely. <laughs> All I remember is watching Zeusy get burned like three times in the same play. <laughs> By basically, their those things stick in your mind. Muscle. You know, it, they they're kind of like a knockoff version of uh, sporting in a way. They have a champion, former championship guy that like zipped through the defense like Johnny Russell would. Yeah, they have a striker, uh, a half price striker out of the Mexican league. He's even more half price because he's Canadian. Exactly, <laughs> half priced. Glad you said that. <laughs> the conversion rate. <laughs> um, and there was there was a couple other similarities too. I, I don't remember what they are now, but I just noticed them when we, when I was like going through different stuff later. Hmm. Dos like Santos in charge. Version. Hmm. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. And I they mean, have turfs. So you didn't yeah. even mention Dos Santos. That was that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, that's actually probably their brightest spot at this point. But anyway, Luis Martins, that going forward, him whipping in crosses from the corner. I love it. He's Agreed. got the ability, enough speed at least to like and enough like creativeness to get around the corner and get a cross off. So that's all I'm I'm very excited. And the one uh pass that he made was pretty much led to Galazzo. Yeah. I don't use that word very often. That was a Galasso though. It, it Undeniably. Was. On his weak foot too. Correct. Wow. Even wow. more fun. Yeah. Yes. Right foot. Glad Johnny got out of the way. <laughs> he, yeah, he, people were ducking. Yeah, I'm glad Johnny was smart enough to let him take it. Yeah, Not, yeah. Like, hey, I'm the I'm the guy here. I'm gonna take it. So what else? What else, there was a lot to like from Kinda. Let's keep it on him. Very, very active, like all over the place. He was everywhere. Very. Um, I don't know the right term for this, but I'm just so I'm just gonna say it, but. Positive as in going forward, like everything he did was go forward. Mm -hmm. That can be a negative at times. So he sometimes he might need to change that up just a little bit. But it wasn't even like like everything we did go forward. He did come back a little bit on some stuff. Yeah, I think there's just maybe needs to be like a five percent more look back before going forward, but not a whole lot more because that going forward part is fun. Well, and what we talked about in the preseason podcast was. With, you know, he's probably only out there because Felipe is out. But if he keeps doing things like that and looks like he looked in the first game, then when Felipe comes back, like, the the odd man out is looking like Roger at this point, right? Well, that's maybe a talk for another time, but possibly. Yeah, we need to see a, a couple more weeks of Kinda doing some stuff. There was a point when... Uh and Vermees was talking in a press conference, and uh, I'm probably skipping ahead to something else. But he was talking about uh, midfielders that he puts in the same category right now, and it was Felipe, Kinda, Roger, yeah. and Busio. Oh, okay. Because there's others that can fill in there, and I could probably list, but those are the – he kind of said those are the four that are competing for those spots. Right yeah. Now. Right. Okay. Okay. Good to know. We'll get more to the uh, media day later. I know. I was trying yes, to. That's, <laughs> that, was good, no, a good, that was a good teaser. Yeah. Nice, nice short and sweet. But it is relevant to what we're talking about. Very sure. relevant to what we're talking about. A little teaser for the second half of the pod. I'm not always relevant. Sometimes <laughs> I try. We're irrelevant most of the time, I think. And irreverent sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so back to the first game. How about <laughs> I did want to talk about, um, let's do Polito first. What do we think of the man himself? Scored a he goal. He got his that, goal. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. That was all I had. Scored a goal that you expect a poacher <laughs> like him to score. He to yeah. put away. Poacher's goal. Something out of more or less nothing. Put in there. Put in the box from Punchec. I liked that too. Yeah. We'll get to Punchec too. So that was two new guys combining on that one. Mm-hmm. And two new guys relatively on the other one. So that was that was a big bonus on that whole first two goals. Yeah, that makes the win a little bit sweeter. I think. Or a little more exciting, even. It makes uh, technical director Peter 
like really happy. Well, okay. I was just going to say that. Can you imagine the smile over some of the ownership's faces and, you know, Brian Bliss's face when yeah. that happened? It's yeah. like, oh, yeah. thank God. Talent identification <laughs> directors. <laughs> thank God. He's already worth the nine and a half million, guys. <laughs> now, okay. So, all positive, uh, nice header. He slipped in on that defender. You know, uh, Punchets gets the assist, even though I can't claim that it was really too right. <laughs> him, purposeful. But it yeah. was. He did the right thing and got it to the area. Uh, Polito gets the header nicely, uh, slipping in past that defender. I'm not sure how to best say that, but he did that great. Some of the other stuff he did in the game was good, and but shows to me that there's not a hundred percent chemistry there yet. Yeah, I can see that. Which, he he was having to track way back a lot to get. I don't know if it was having to or he was just helping. But, well, and I'm okay with that because yeah. that's the guy he's supposed to be. Yeah. He's not supposed to be Nemo that mostly stays up. Nemo right. was supposed to come back more, but he mostly stayed up. He was also supposed to score goals. Do we even have to talk goals? about him? <laughs> Do we have to talk about him? He's gone. Uh, I don't yeah. hate Nemo. He's a good guy. <laughs> you had some wasn't. choice words for him last year on the podcast. I didn't want him here. Yeah. I like him. Like There's him as a, a guy. Difference. There's a <laughs> difference. I want him to be successful wherever he's at. I did not expect him to be successful here. He, for half a year, he proved me wrong. For the other half of the year, he proved me right. <laughs> yes. So, and even with Polito, I'm like, it doesn't matter how many goals he scores. It matters how well he makes the team play. It matters a little how many goals he scores. Because if he scores goals like he did. Against Vancouver, that's going to make a huge difference in in those tight games. It will, but I, when I say it doesn't matter how many goals, I mean I, I, we know what you mean. Ten but yeah. and twenty, I don't care. We just have to argue with you, right? If he scores ten goals and gets ten assists, I'm happy. But it's when he scores them, right? If he's setting up other people and distract and detract distracting defenders so other people are open up, great. It's it's. Making the team better, which is what Shelton did at that spot two years ago. He helped the team be better. Right. Now we got a guy who can actually score at that spot. I think so that is good that a good segue thing. over to? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is the last thing I have for our first segment here. The When we talked about it, we were sure that Kyrie was not actually going to start there. Well, I don't know if we were sure. <laughs> The way we left that on the podcast was like was like yeah uh, Daniel or or uh, Gerso on the left like we, yeah, that's really yeah. all we really know. well we all know and Vermees I'm sure is in this that Russell is a better attacking player on the right but that's not why Kyrie was there no it it's not yeah Peter knows Johnny is a better attacking player on the right <laughs> but there was reasons and big part of those reasons. Um, was just defensively the the left back was extremely good, extremely fast, extremely physical for Vancouver. Johnny, as good as he is, and he's a pretty good defender for being the forward that he is. He'll do the work. Yeah, he'll do the work. But now you're taking him pretty much. You're gonna wear him completely out if he's doing that. Work. Yeah, he's he's like a he'd be like a forty minute man at that point. Right. Where Kyrie having to do that work, he's still a ninety minute man. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. Johnny still, remember, he missed a couple weeks of preseason for baby Johnny and some other stuff. So he he's not even fully maybe up to speed of everybody mm-hmm. else. And nobody, most of the players are not like, uh, you know, 90 minute completely fit yet. Right. But but so the, the discussion here has to be that Johnny was indeed less noticeable out there. Yes. We did not get to see his patented maneuvering. <laughs> he was there were times you kind of like forgot he was even out there and it that doesn't seem right to me if you got Johnny Russell on your team I I do want him to be more involved and I'm very conflicted because I am I believe I think I think I'm on team Kyrie but I just it's like that's Johnny's spot like he needs to be playing over there right but it worked and it worked. we've got a 3-1 win and you know that's 
It works, but is Johnny? Will Johnny be happy over there all season if the well, comes that's, to that? he's not going to be there all season. I think. I mean, there's some things we we heard at media day. I talked to Johnny particularly. Um, we'll talk about later in the second half, but uh, okay. yeah. So let's just take a break, and then we will come back and expand a little bit on Kyrie and Johnny Russell. Okay. 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 We'll be right back with more Shades of Blue Soccer Show. When it's a fight for night. When it's a fight for night. We can gather all the friends all around the tomb. That's not a better thing to do. When it's a fight for night. When it's a fight for night. When the final whistle blows, we're gonna celebrate tonight. When the final whistle blows, we're gonna celebrate tonight. When the final whistle blows, you know we're gonna feel alright. Alright. I love that song. I that is too. that is the Vanden Arms. And uh, Thad, I believe you have some intel on the Vanden Arms. Yeah, they, they. I think we mentioned before that they uh, are back together again and performing, and they will be in Kansas City performing for a St. Patrick's Day show. Not on St. Patrick's Day, but close to it. On <laughs> March 14th, there will be some other bands there, but really we don't care about them, just the Vanden Arms. March 14th where? At Davies Uptown Ramblers Club. Oh, my God. I have no idea what that is, and I work in That's radio. my old hangout. <laughs> it's 3402 Main Street. Man, you gotta work pretty hard to find a venue that I am not aware of in this city. Like that, I'm really impressed that I don't that I've never heard of that. Considering your extravagant social life and your job, yes. The job, yeah. <laughs> you really hang out there? No, I was oh, just kidding. Oh. I think I have been there. I believed you. I think I have been there one time, but I'm not totally sure. Okay, yeah. So that's the Vane and Arms. We're very grateful to them. Both of the songs we use are theirs, and they're soccer themed, and they're great. Thank you, boys. And they have. Soccer fans, even if they're not necessarily sporting KC fans. Right. <laughs> soccer, they're in the soccer world. Okay, so, media day, fellas. Woo, woo. Media day was yesterday. Uh, I was there for always, training. It's always good because that means that they allowed you to have a credential again. <laughs> I got the credential. <laughs> it's officially in my hands now. I've got it. They can't take it from me now. Thank, thank you, Thad. Well, I definitely could. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they could rip it right off your neck. Got some decent swag too. That's what if Peter or if uh, if Patrick or Robo were listening to that, they heard me say it. They're like, "Oh, I can take that away." <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've had that Just like that, like national team games. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so as Robert said, I got a I got a goodie bag thanks to Thad because I had to leave media day early and go to. A real job, unfortunately. So, two-part media day. One was at training, and one was at the stadium with interviews and food. Yes, with interviews and food. And I want to hear about what I missed. So, Well, you missed um, on, Navy I, Steels. I heard, Sorry. I heard that there's a giant pretzel the size of a pizza box. Was that just, was that exaggeration? This is true. We haven't seen it. Maybe a slight exaggeration. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. Pretzel, I love pretzels. That's my favorite stadium food. It looked like it came with three dipping sauces, too. Mm-hmm. I'm not a big dipper, but like Pretty if one of those deal. is cheese, I'm on board. <laughs> I'm not a dipper. I don't like ketchup. I don't like mustard. I don't like I don't like stuff like that. I'm not a dipper, guys. You do All barbecue right. sauce? Okay. I'll do barbecue sauce. I am from Kansas City. <laughs> well, I was going to give a quick rundown of, of some things he missed. Navy SEALs. Um, Why were there Navy SEALs Ali Trost. Oh, um, I did miss Margaritas. Trost. Oh. Yeah, we're good. Ooh, um, so they got good margs in the stadium. Lots of hand sanitizer. Uh, what else, Thad? <laughs> Some highlights for you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, because the hand sanitizer. Jake Reed being um, diplomatic. Uh, Jake Reed was the uh, first promo, speaker. First yes. Speaker. Right. Right. And actually, yeah. you have him to thank for the margaritas because they weren't planning on doing this. exactly. That is true. He, thank he you, Jake basically Reed. Basically, pressured them into like <laughs> getting the media people drunk. I mean, well, not that, but no, whoa. but okay. <laughs> okay, that sounds cool. I definitely... And there was four food samples. Yeah, some good um, nachos and some... You and I have different opinions. Yeah, oh, yeah I thought they were decent. The burn-ins were good. The There was a burn-in sandwich, a kicking chicken sandwich. That was like Chick-fil-A. But kimchi yeah. tots and the right. uh, brachos. Good stuff. Oh yeah, that's what I. <laughs> good stuff. I liked it all. I that's thought it was pretty good. What I read good. in the in the press release was the word brachos. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, <laughs> really? <laughs> so, in fairness, the chicken sandwich was similar to a Chick Fil A sandwich. Yeah, that's it good. Was, 
they made slider versions for us, so I'm not sure if they're fully 100% like they would have been. Yeah. But uh, the burn ends were decent. A, a spicy chicken sandwich? No. No? Okay. It, I don't know if it's supposed to be, cause, but it wasn't. The burn ends were okay. I mean, as burn ends go, I'm not a big burn ends guy anyway. But see, I do like oh, burn ends for yeah. shame. But they were. That's the problem. And, and actually, I, I got to defend Jake and Jake from sporting. Because <laughs> uh, you wearing khakis anyway. Oh jeez. But anyway, wow, I have to wow. defend that whole thing for a second. Because I, I, at first, I was, I wanted to complain about it. They have the American Royal barbecue stand. Mm-hmm. Well, American Royal isn't a barbecue joint. I know. I was really right. Right. It's a conglomeration. Part. It's the people who run the biggest barbecue contest in the world. But in fairness, if they had brought in Jack Stack or Joe's or Gates or that would make everyone, Arthur Bryant's or somebody would else, be mad Arthur Bryant's, that it wasn't a different one. It would be like a quarter of the people would be happy and right. a quarter of the people would be like, yeah, that's not bad. And the other half would be like, Hey, that's not my favorite place. Did you ask someone about that? Cause I feel like that's the answer you would get is like that basic explanation. No, he actually gave that explanation. Oh, he did. Talk. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, no, that's what, kudos to Jake. He, he, he covered that one in the, 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 his little speech to start it off with. He said it nicer than I can, but he's... let's call him Tall Jake, so there's no more confusing. Confusion. Well, kudos to Tall Jake and the whole sporting organization because more variety at the concession stands. Yes, more yeah, local I do. stuff. I appreciate that a lot. From Better them. Wi-Fi. They're going. They're doing a good job of listening to the fans, and that was Jake's yeah. key point. That they're listening to the fans more. They than redid they a used whole bunch to. of stand of the food stands and some stuff that you won't see, like the Wi-Fi. They spent almost as much money on that as they did on player moves. Wow. Okay. So. In theory, they spent about $20 million in the offseason. But, hey, it was packed with media. There was more damn media than I've seen in <laughs> I don't know how long. Yeah, it was packed. A, a big discussion was about Spanish availability. Uh, I guess the Twitter account for Sporting Kansas City, the Spanish one or whatever, hasn't been very active, according to uh, our man Jimmy Mack. It's been it's, dead. It's a complaint that Mike has actually been giving out there for yeah, a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Soy there are going to be SAP broadcast availability on, on all the broadcasts, so that's nice. Yeah, SAP that's option. Who's doing that? I don't know. Yeah. Interesting. La Grande, probably. I, they they asked about having like a bilingual person in the booth. They volunteered to do it. Be up there with Nate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got two white bread dudes in the in the booth right now. <laughs> well, yeah. Like Nate, Miracle Nate. Whip on their Wonder Bread white. <laughs> Listening to With Journey. American cheese. <laughs> Listening to Journey. Uh, yeah, Nate's apparently been studying Spanish, so. Yeah. Yeah, that was one of my favorite things from the Polito press Nate conference. Nate speaking G- Spanish could be interesting. Was everyone that was surprising Peter with Spanish questions that they'd been <laughs> that they'd been working on. <laughs> okay, yeah. so training. What was your what was something interesting you saw from training yesterday? Oh, we have interviews from Media Day too that we'll throw in there too, but yeah, sure. But from actual training, let's see. Yeah. Roger running around, wasn't participating in the right. training on Tuesday. Right. Roger was just on the side, Was came out quite late, and then was just running on the side, and then what, at one point was just sitting there, like, making fun of Daniel Shalloway. It was literally sitting. <laughs> Him, just, Fontes, and Gutierrez yeah, sitting Yeah, he was down, just yeah. sitting there yelling at Shalloway. <laughs> <laughs> well, you kind of figure that's like a little brother relationship there at this point. Yeah. Um, yeah, so... I kind of asked about that, and the, the, the phrase I was told was he's taking a pro day. So I think, <laughs> Which, uh, it's a thing. He's earned it. Yeah, it's a he's, thing. he's been around for a while. He can take a day and rest his old body. I was going to say, we want those legs to be fresh. So, uh, You know, was, back in high school, I did that. I took what I considered a pro day. You took a pro, pro day, day in high school? Yes. It was the Cardinals were legal. in the World Series, and I skipped soccer practice to go watch the World Series game, that, and my coach was pissed. I never figured out why. Of course, I was in pro, high school. so Not a pro day. Anyway. You just skip school to go watch baseball. <laughs> That's not a pro day. I skipped soccer practice, not school. Thank oh, you okay. very much. Okay. Was that in St. Louis? Yes. Then he should have been okay with it. Exactly. How'd that uh, World Series go, by the way? Um, that was 1985. Ah, oh yeah. So not very well. Thanks though. <laughs> <laughs> Asshole. Okay, what is something else that we saw from train? Oh, we talked about uh, Kyrie Shelton, and just like you see him in the game, you, you just see him for 90 minutes. But this dude is just—he's a physical specimen. Wait a minute, was that Winston Reed or was that Kyrie Shelton? <laughs> what? 
for, I could tell them. I could tell them <laughs> apart. Robert was having trouble doing that. But. They're both beasts, though. They're both big dudes. They're they're both listed at six three. Because uh, see, I, I couldn't I tell who thought, was taller. I thought Kyrie was a little bit taller in real life, but they're listed as six three, and Reed was listed at like one ninety, and Kyrie at one eighty. Okay. But yeah, you just look at Kyrie Shelton standing there on the field. It's like that. I want that guy on my team. <laughs> Uh, Peter described Reed as uh, he could play linebacker for the Chiefs. Right. Well, and Kyrie looks like he could be a tight end. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Winston Reed, a little skinny for a for a lineman. Linebacker. Linebacker. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, mm, yeah. Okay. I can. I'll allow it. <laughs> yeah. Throw on some pads. <laughs> yeah. You you allow can, it. Yeah. That adds a little more Gee, weight. Thanks, there. Cody Bradley. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but uh, from training, you know, my observations, they had some really cool drills they were doing. It's a Tuesday day, so it's not a heavy, heavy day. But, uh, you know, you could uh, you could definitely see that the pace of play is a huge focus at, at training, which is not surprising. Oh, yeah. And then the but, second I I didn't even see it drop. But for me, the second he saw it drop a little bit, uh-huh. he was like all over it. Yeah. 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 Hey, yellow team. That's that's good. No, great team. Got to pick it up. Pick it up. Great team. Great, come on, great team. Yeah. With yeah. a little more profanity thrown in there. Yeah, I was going to say, you censored him quite well there. <laughs> <laughs> no, you were mentioning Martins earlier, but, you know, in the training, little things they were doing, especially the, what, 5v5 with the media, uh, neutral players, he, very skilled, very strong on the ball. He's just, he's, that's just the way he is. I dig it. Yeah, he was he was doing very well in those possession games. Mm, right. And uh, there, there was one time, like, the – the team he was on like passed the ball around for like two minutes. Right. Another yeah. Team could Seemingly. Not get it. Yeah. It, it was. Yeah. They were. They were making fun of. The was that against the great team? Oh, I don't, I don't know. remember. But it, it had some good players on that. <laughs> well, so they do. You know, they train with a lot of the younger guys, a lot of the Swope guys, or SKC too, and you know, you can tell the difference. Like maybe who belongs or who doesn't yet, or who who's there as a, a body to fill in and things like that, and. And Gianluca Busio is just one hundred percent one of the one of the big guys on this team. Like oh, yeah. you, he he absolutely belongs out on the field. Like any time he's ever given a chance, and it's you can just tell right away. Well, that's an important point that you were talking about, Thad, that Peter made in the in the press conference about who's competing for what in the midfield. Yeah, and he's he's right there. He's competing for those spots with Felipe and Kinda and Roger. And he got in too. He was and, in. Yeah, and I late think sub. We'll see more and more of him. Um, I would dare say we see more homegrown players, and there's more of them on the roster, so it would make sense. But we see more homegrown players get minutes this year than we've ever before. Just, I think there's a lot of them that are in that category that they're going to get some chance. Well, specifically, what did Vermees say? If you can uh, quote that for us, or uh, <laughs> <laughs> you talked about oh, it earlier, yeah. right? competing with the four spot. Who are the people he mentioned that were competing all for the same? Similar positions. I loved that. Uh, <laughs> Did I just say that? No. I'm going to cut No, that you didn't out. exactly Kanda, say what he said. Espinoza, um, Felipe. And Felipe Gutierrez are, are the guys he puts in that category of right. competing for the starting spots at that role. Right, exactly. Because there's others that could be in the competition, but those are the four right. right now. And we take that to mean the two eights. Yeah. Okay. Two, two eight slash tens. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, Bob, you talked to Johnny, right? Yeah, and, you know, I, I kind of mentioned offhandedly, uh, you know, when you played on the right, because I was doing a, some background on, on a Zuzi story I'm doing, and I kind of joked about that. But then later on in the conversation, Johnny says, you know, it's quite possible that I'll, um, you know, you'll see me on the right very soon, um, Good. implying this weekend. So I, tactically, obviously, Kyrie and, and was on there defensively, as we've talked about. And I think against Houston, you're going to see – you know, more of a, a Johnny on the right, most likely. Okay, well, there That's you go. That's what I take from that. Hey, one of the knocks you often hear about Vermees is that he's not malleable. And, you know, if he's if he's picking lineups based on matchups and it worked like that, right? then tip of the cap to him. And he does change up the tactics a lot more than people give him credit for. And then when he does change up the actual lineup, they're, hey, why are you not playing the best guy? Right. <laughs> but see, that's, just, you know, maybe not the same people that are doing it. It's just that's what it's like in that job. Oh, yeah. 
you know, you answer one criticism or you, you know, not that you do it because you were criticized, but it's like you, if he's hearing something all the time and then he eventually does that, then it's the other portion of the world yells at him for not doing it or for not doing it the old way. Now, don't everyone call me out if Johnny doesn't end up playing on the right, but that's what I took Johnny's little mention to mean. I'm going to, I'm so. going to, I'm going to at you the <laughs> second the roster comes out. <laughs> yeah. And well, not the second the roster comes out because it'll be. And not in position order. So. <laughs> True right. that. The, the, the team, the SKC match day account is the one that just listed them off by number, by jersey number, just put them on a list. <laughs> but the team did tweet out. Like five minutes before the game. Oh, it was? It was pretty close. I don't know, five minutes, ten minutes. Yeah, I didn't actually catch up to all that until like right when the game started. So, so was there anything else from media, like interviews and stuff that stuck out to you, Mr. Bell? Um. I talked to quite. A, I tried to get his, hit as many of the new guys as possible in that the amount of time we had. So, I s- did speak to Gotti. Nice guy. English is not too bad. Talked to. Pumpich. That's good. I was actually just about to ask you that. He does speak pretty good English. He's not going to understand everything. So I mean, he. he but he, he was doing it in English. Yes. That means he's like fairly confident because a lot of players. Never want to do that. Well, I don't know. They have a Hebrew translator, so yeah, <laughs> yeah, he has to. <laughs> um, but he was he very with willing. A family? He, didn't, he didn't seem very unwilling, so I mean, he was fine. Did he bring a family over? Uh, I remember he had a girlfriend in pictures with him. Yeah. in Kansas City. So. Oh, that's right. I did see a girl with him. Okay, interesting. Uh, talked to Punchich, Roberto. Very good English. Man, that guy was like, a, I was very surprised. Yeah. Yeah, he's better than me. What about his play on the field that last game? We didn't mention him. I liked it. I felt I felt comfortable with him back there. Yeah, I think it's definitely there. I mean, him and Beasler, and if they keep a good partnership going, you'll have uh, Reed when he's ready, challenging those guys. Mm-hmm. Both of those guys, I think. I mean, yeah, I really hope that Reed does. Like yeah. I, I, I suppose it's possible he's just one of those guys that comes in and we never really see but you know let's not like put him in the brad evans <laughs> well <laughs> at least just say the name get it out in the universe and like yeah yeah well going back to roberto uh a number of people i talked to amelia Zuzi, beasler uh and you talked about this i think cody in the preseason how good roberto was at stepping up into the midfield at proper times yeah intercepting passes being in the right position yeah something i always attacks something i always thought beasler was really good at so it's good to have Two More guys like one. that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he's got some speed. He's not the fastest guy in the world, but he's got some speed. Yeah. Um, I asked him, like, one of the reasons – I asked him why he came to Kansas City. And uh, basically he had a friend uh, that plays for RSL. He used to play with the guy, uh, one of his guys when he was in Germany, and that guy went to RSL, Damien De- uh, Krylak, I think. I have not seen his name correctly. But we don't need to get RSL names right. Can continue. Yeah, they're they're <laughs> evil anyway. But um, so he's like he started watching MLS. He's like, man, I like that league. He go, so when he got a chance, he said, I jumped at it. He goes, yeah, I I immediately wanted it. Nice. And I so I asked him like what he thought about the league. You know, how's it compared to other leagues he played in? And he's like, he goes, I don't want to compare leagues. He goes, but the thing I've noticed here is all the teams want to play soccer. They want to play the ball to foot. He goes, it's not always that way in Europe. A lot of teams just play for the tactics and play defense, and yeah. they don't want to play soccer, and here they want to play soccer. I said, well, Interesting. I said, well, you, that, you've seen preseason so far. Wait till reality hits. There'll be teams that are just bunkering when they yeah. get there. But, <laughs> but, you know, he, it was just an interesting observation that he sees it that way. Um, two other th- kind of interesting <clears throat> notes to me was I asked, because I asked everybody, like, why they came here. It was, like, thing. So Gotti is like, yeah, you know, it was a chance to get out of the country and go do something different and a new challenge and all that stuff. And I said, well, how they can, you know, he goes, but once I talked to the coach, that that sold me on it. <laughs> yeah. I forget his exact word. Man, how many I times have we heard that throughout all this time of once I talked to Peter, that was yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> and then the same thing from Winston Reed. Yeah. was, you know, he was looking for another opportunity. He didn't nice. want to go to the championship. He wanted to go somewhere else. And when he talked to coach, he goes, he, he sold me on it. I say I kind of hear that a lot from players. He goes, "Yeah, maybe he could sell used cars." <laughs> yeah, he uh, I don't think could. it's BS. I just think it's he knows what he's talking about, and he's very convincing. Well, and I think one of the things is he's very passionate about the project. Oh, definitely, has, definitely passionate. Right. Oh, yeah. So what he believes in what he's doing. You can you can criticize whether it's the right move here or there, or the right player, or the right tactic, or any of that stuff. But the one thing you can't 
criticize is the the belief he has in himself and the people that he has around him. Right. Yeah, and and just it goes along those same lines, but just like the pa- passion with which he does it and that he feels for this team and, and you know it's it's beautiful. And it generates good gifts. Yes, we're waxing lyrical about Burmese. Get over it, Burmese haters. There has to be some listening. Well, I'm going to throw this in here, a little bit of shameless self-promotion, but in my latest article on the Blue Testament, uh, entitled Sporting Kansas City Absolutely in the Right Mindset, there's some snarky comments, but that's okay. Um, Burmese, um, according to Ilya, Burmese, you know, we talked about tactical adjustments. Uh, Thad mentioned it. According to Ilya, um, Burmese has brought in some new ideas this season uh here's his exact quote he says peter brought uh we're trying to understand what peter has brought from the off season he brought some new ideas we're trying to put on the field we have a lot of work on off the field to understand that but in the end the mentality is the key and i think guys have the right one but uh so peter has some new ideas apparently tactically well good and i i do think that they have changed tactics a bit i don't think we've seen even right right that probably goes with having some new toys that he has on the field too sure of course it does yeah and the level of capability that they have i mean yeah at least in theory um and then when you have a guy like reed potentially stepping in there you know if he's even remotely close to what he was before Mm -hmm. um, yeah it He'll have a lot of high quality, and that, this is a word that Peter's used a lot lately: <clears throat> high quality players. Well, money buys quality. We we know that for the most part. And if you remember last year, an article I did near the end of the year where Peter kind of unloaded on some con- not not uh, individuals, but high quality players don't make those mistakes. High quality players do this and do that. Ah, uh, yeah. And we need players to that are supposed to be high quality to step up and do things and things like that. Uh, supposedly some players didn't like that article. Oh. Uh, like, I didn't Thad's put the words in the pot, mouth. but yeah. <laughs> so he's he's mentioned that a lot this year, if they brought in high quality. Okay. So, by the way, earlier today, I, I feel like this isn't actually all the way <laughs> new news here, but from a few hours ago on Wednesday. This is about Reed? Yeah, a report that West Ham are still paying 85% of Winston Reed's wages while he's on this. Did oh, we know it was that much? I feel like we heard at one point that it was the risk was taken off of us quite a bit, but I didn't know that it, it would have they'd... to be because the salary he's got. Yeah. But 85%, man, how bad do you want to just get this guy some playing time? <laughs> That's crazy. Well, it's the only way you're going to get it. I mean, there nobody else is good. even as good as Reed could be. He's still a little bit of an unknown quantity. He's still a bit of a risk. And teams like Sporting aren't going to take it for 50% of the risk, you know, for 50% of the finance. So if that if 85% is true, they're paying him 59,500 5, 59, euro a week, which for six months will be over a million and a half euro. <laughs> the number I saw earlier was more like a total of $700,000. Okay, okay, I, I, okay. I didn't do the math, so I'm just going off of what I read. Somebody else. Well, I do. I do like the like the signing. I know it's obviously too early to say that, but what he just has to be a good addition on the training ground and just like a mentality of what a serious footballer is supposed to do. You know, things like that. The, yeah, and if he makes the field like for half the year, that, that's a big bonus. God, it is starting to sound like Brad Evans. I don't like all these comparisons. We said that. <laughs> how many times did we say that the year of Brad Evans? Well, if he just if he plays like two games, it'll be worth it. <laughs> <laughs> just one big game. I, I think I was yeah. saying at one point. Yeah. Um, and then he never even did that. Yeah, but now he's an ambassador for Seattle. <laughs> no, and the one disappointment for the training that we got to watch was I didn't really get to watch Reed very closely in a lot of it. Yeah, I didn't really either. Um, fact, what I mean, he was for me. He wasn't noticeable a lot until I kind of had to like just watch him for a minute, and it was when he was one of the neutrals on the outside of some of those games. So I'm not. I don't even know if he was totally playing in those. A good way to integrate him. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it, that kind of role. It, yeah, I think he was probably playing in those, and I just really didn't notice it because one field was close, one field was far. And he, I think he was on the. Yeah, that's annoying. I hate time. when I hate when that happens. 
And you can't, yeah. The old, the old place you could walk around the sides and. Oh yeah. So anyway, it's hopefully more trainings. I'll get to watch him a little bit more and see, but he was, he was a nice guy to talk to and he definitely seemed like he liked the, uh, the team in the area. Does so he have far. a, does he have a cool New Zealand accent? No, it was more British. Ah, oh, what a disappointment that is. <laughs> I thought that was going to be a good addition to this team. The, uh, All right. Anything else we have missed gentlemen? Uh, we have to talk about the dynamo. Do we now? <laughs> All right. All right, there's All a game right. coming up. Oh, yeah. This I, told, I told you, I oh, warned yeah. you guys I was going to be scatterbrained today. <laughs> okay, so Houston Dynamo this weekend. Last week they went one-to-one with the Galaxy. In Houston, right? It was in Houston. Well, I think with Houston we've got, or I think we know what we've got, right? What's the first thing that jumps out into your mind for Houston? Is there a name? Uh, Maro Manotas. And Ellis, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Alberth. They've got Darwin Quintero, of course, too. Alberth and Ellis. Throwing in Memo Rodriguez. So, you know, they're a, a strong attacking team, right? Ellis is one of the ugliest people in <laughs> Major League Soccer. <laughs> and unattractive. <laughs> Just had to make sure I got okay, that out Okay, thank you for that. But, um, you know, basically the idea with Houston seems to be, the prevalent idea is that <clears throat> they're the 2019 Sporting Kansas City. <laughs> yeah, they got a strong attack, but they're going to give up a lot of goals as well, too. <laughs> but, yeah, I don't think we can say any of that about Houston right now. It's one game into the new coach's reign. Well, it's basically the same group of players that have missed the, two, the playoffs for two years in a row now, yeah, basically. A better coach? Yeah, well, we'll see what kind of a difference you can make. Sure. Two games in, though, are we going to see much of that? Probably not. They didn't lose to L.A. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but, but LA is a team in transition as well. Yeah, and that's still not something that good to say. They didn't <laughs> lose to LA, who f- seems to finish in seventh place every single year. So. <laughs> LA Galaxy, just to clarify. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they finished above Sporting last year. They did. Everyone did, except one team. That's because they had it's a like quality Colorado. player in Vancouver. that Ibrahimovic oh, guy. Oh, Vancouver, duh, that's right. Um, so that's another thing from the... Our earlier talk is don't take too much from that game, Vancouver game. Oh, sure, of course. It was a mediocre team last year. Shut up, Thad. They're great. <laughs> this team is great. Okay. Don't go too high. Don't go too low. But, hey, Houston did win the 2018 U.S. Open Cup, so there's that. But They have ability, man. Yeah, oh, they do, definitely. They so just, my thought is it's going to be a high-scoring game. They have ability and With at least the three yellow cards. the most out of it. So that's Tab is a good coach, and he and Peter know each other pretty well. Yeah, and um, the rumor is that Ramos wants to press this year, and you know we know that the sporting backs are a little suspect when it comes to working out of the back. Once we get out on the fly, you know, Martins, et cetera. Well, great. They're, I mean, they're probably going to be decent, but home opener. In the blue hell, it is going to be the bluest hellish that it's been in a long time. Exactly. It's going to be a gorgeous day, too. And a beautiful day. Like a long time, like a year. Yeah. That is a long time, isn't it? (laughs) The uh, players players are going to be all pumped up to get out in front of the fans. And that's actually one of my biggest worries is that it's like one of the things like Peter talks about when he goes other places. The the other team should be driving the play, not sporting, right? But sporting would drive the play a lot. Mm -hmm. Well, at home home opener, big fanfare, big signings, all of that stuff, new barbecue, whatever. <laughs> all that's going to be pressure. The new barbecue is really <clears throat> going to get these guys pumped up. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm more excited for, like, BRGR and the uh, taco places. Oh, yeah, but, I'm going to go. I'm going to hit up BRGR for sure. Anyway, uh, that's kind of my worry is that they'll give up an early goal because they're pushing it too hard. You know, Zussi and Martins will be both flying up the wing, and nobody will be back. So it, that's my one of my biggest worries about this particular game is that they'll they'll be I, overdoing it. I do feel that this team is equipped to deal with uh, conceding an early goal more so than last year. Well, there was lots of attacking talent last year, also, 
it was more of a mental thing. Well, towards the end of the season, it didn't feel like it. No. You know, if they went down early, it just seemed like, all right, well, that's that. Yeah, because they were totally mentally out of it by that point. Okay, so give me a prediction, Robert Russert. Uh, 3-1 again. Us. Two scores. Um, well, you only have to give one goal score. I'm gonna give, I'm gonna go for Russell. Russell's gonna put one in. However, Johnny I boy. will I will say that in training we all saw there was a moment when Russell kind of sort of limped off the field a little bit, maybe of a a hip groin bothersome thing. So and, well, hopefully that doesn't. Also, very quickly, one thing we saw from training: a rare Daniel Shallowy stunner. Yes, that's true. Like that was probably, that was like twenty yards out, and he just he had it dipping like it looks so good, and it's like what? Where's this guy at? Why, why don't we ever get to see this guy? That uh, what's your prediction? I think we might be seeing him again, but uh, we also saw a good goal from Shelton. Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Actually, I like the three one score. I quite I, I honestly do. That's uh, I don't want to like be copying you there. Okay, who's your goal scorer? At least one. Puncic. Oh, oh. I like it. Get, uh, scoring on a header on a corner kick. Is that where we're at here? I think so. I'm going to throw it a second. I'm going to say Busio. All right. Busio coming in at about the the 72nd minute. He gets the third goal. (laughs) All right. I like 4 2. I'm going 4 2. We like the two goal lead here. And and out shooting them 27 to 5. But will we expect goals out them? We did in Vancouver. Get your XG out of here. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Blue Testament KC. Join us at thebluetestament.com and leave us a comment, and we will talk to you next week. Go sport egg! Anything to shake this foot I'm in My foot buttings got me drinking My foot buttings got me drinking My foot buttings got me drinking